you're worried everyone was uh, cold, blustery. <laughs> Thank goodness for the uh, cold front. It took me a while to find my winter coat. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started if everybody is ready. This is a wonderful, wonderful occasion uh, for the city of Tampa, Hillsborough County, and the entire Tampa Bay area today. Uh, first of all, I would like to just take a moment to recognize everyone that took part in this grant process. I know it has been a while, so everybody here that played a part, raise your hand so that we can, I know Bob, I know Stephen, I know Gene, all of you guys did, so thank you, thank you, thank you. I know that it was quite a bit of work uh, that went into it, and uh, you know, as, as grant processes go, it took uh, a little bit of time. But I also would be remiss if I didn't think my predecessor, Bob Buckhorn, he was the one who began this entire process. He's the one that finished uh, the original river walk after I believe five mayors had worked on it. So he brought that to fruition uh, with a grant. And now we couldn't be more excited to bring the west side of the river walk uh, through a build grant, $24 million build grant that was received that will really transform this side of the river. We have so much that is going on in the, the West Tampa area. The revitalization is absolutely wonderful. We're bringing West Tampa back to life historically and also with some new development. So very exciting. When this segment of the river walk is done, we will have over 12 miles, 12 miles of trails, mobility trails that will connect not just along the, the west side of the river and connect over to the east side, but it will connect to Tampa Heights, downtown, West Tampa, Ybor City, and so it really is wonderful the way that we are going to bring our city together through mobility connections that don't necessarily need or necessitate a car. And so uh, that's, that's just incredibly exciting. And as we have seen our urban core transform and the development that has gone along with it, you know, it has literally been transformational for our downtown area. This build grant will allow that same transformation uh, for the west side of the river. So unbelievably exciting. And now I'm going to introduce the person that made it happen. We needed a lot of help. We, we looked at all the individuals, partners on the city team, uh, partners in the community that, um, that made this happen. But really, you have to have that voice in Washington, D.C. And we had three voices up there. We had Senator Rubio and Scott. And we had uh, my good friend, Congresswoman Kathy Castor, who is the loudest voice for the Tampa Bay area. And she is always working hard on our side to ensure that we can lift our city up for all of our residents. So Congresswoman. And I am thrilled that it is happening in the early days of Mayor Jen, Jane Castor's tenure because it gives her the tools to lift these neighborhoods and build a better, more connected community. And you're right, Mayor, it's been uh, every mayor uh, since maybe Billy Poe in the 1970s had, has had something to do with the revitalization of the Whisper River and the River Walk and, and our neighborhoods. Uh, and yes, the mayors that got us this far, it's been transformational. Uh, it's created jobs, it's given us a place to recreate and come together, uh, celebrate sports victories, celebrate weddings, celebrate uh, everything that we cherish about living here in the Tampa Bay area. Uh, I saw what $10 million could do to help move the, the last phase of the river walk along. And I've seen what these federal investments uh, can do to lift our hometown. The Encore project has been mm -hmm. transformational. 
Getting the uh, I-4 Crosstown connector is also a very important federal investment. But this one, I think, will uh, go beyond all of those type of investments because I share your vision. It is going to radiate out. This isn't something just for downtown and families who come here uh, you know, on the weekend. This is going to radiate out now to West Tampa, to Egypt Lake, to Fairwood and Forest Hills to the north. It is going to radiate out into Tampa Heights and help you make Igor City and East Tampa and help help it make a more livable place, uh, a real sense of place. And this could not have been done without a lot of you. And uh, Christine, I, you are the epitome of the outspoken citizen advocate. So many years you have said that we can we can lift. Tampa neighbors by making these kind of investments where you don't have to get into a car. Uh, also, you've really uh, been the drum for many years on the fact that unfortunately more people die crossing the street here and riding their bike than just about any other metro area in the country. So we're changing that. Uh, Jane and her team are smarter about how you connect communities and improve mobility. But I see this now as the linchpin to what Jane wants to do, Mayor Castor wants to do, to incentivize more affordable housing, close to amenities like this, pathways and bike trails. It's going to lift our small business owners that will be attracted to a place like this and have more customers at a time when they really need that shopping on and all the thousands of local jobs that over time this will create. Yes, in building this project, but also, again, rippling out, radiating out to lift our entire community. This is one to celebrate, and I'm grateful to all of you for making it happen, and I cannot wait to see uh, what comes in, the, in the future years. So thank you. project like this does for a community and it, it really um, just was was underscored for me at the last 4th of July, 4th of July 2020 doesn't count, but the last 4th of July with the boom by the bay and we started with the hot dog eating event and the armature works, we had city employees and, and uh, residents all here in Julian B. Lane Park we had uh, the water ski show down at uh, uh, Waterworks, and, or I'm sorry, down at, at uh, SBP. And so just the entire river, we had events down there and fireworks in three different locations. And city residents from everywhere, families enjoying themselves, old, young, in between. It was just a wonderful, wonderful event. And I think that is, a result of that first portion of the river walk. So imagine what we are going to be able to accomplish by lining our entire river in that river walk that everyone can enjoy the focal point of the city of Tampa, which should be the Hillsborough River. So absolutely wonderful. As Congresswoman Castor said, uh, Christina Costa is quite the advocate. I am glad to say that I have always been on the right side, which was her side <laughs> of the issues, so, which was very, very uh, wonderful. I got to work with her on, on my time on the uh, walk by Tampa Bay, trying to make our city streets safer uh, for our bicyclists, pedestrians, and vehicles. And so uh, I thank you for all that you have done. You have had a vision and you have worked very, very hard. And right now she is associated with the Pedal Power Promoters. I always work with uh, Christine on the Vision Zero and will continue to do so as well. So a few words from you, Christine. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words. I'm going for coaches. <laughs> it is really exciting to be here to celebrate this important um, achievement the 
better utilization investment to leverage development. That's a lot of words, but each word is very, very important in and of itself. I'm Christina Costa of Pedal Power Promoters, and I'm also on the board of Walk Bike Tampa. Fellow board member Emily Hinsdale is here. She also uh, leads Sidewalk Stompers and has enjoyed working with the mayor, Crosswalks to Classrooms. I'm also on the board of the FDOT funded regional coalition Bike Walk Tampa Bay, which was led by Mayor Castor. Before I tell you what I'm going to tell you, I wish to acknowledge that, like many cities, our advocacy landscape is not nearly as diverse as it should be. We're working hard to rectify this, and we strive to achieve an advocacy leadership that represents everyone in our community, all ages, sizes, abilities, colors, religious orientation, uh, gender orientation, and especially our black and brown brothers and sisters, so we're working to that end. I've biked as a modal choice in over 30 cities in 10 countries. I've pedaled the pavement as a bike commuter in Tampa for over a decade, and I even attended HCC classes on Dale Mary Highway. So I say these things not to sound boastful about my privilege and my travels, or to make you wince thinking about a nearly 50-year-old woman biking on Del Mabry Highway, <laughs> although my family did. Uh, I say this to lend uh, credence to Mayor Castor's words that this project is going to create a world-class, a world-class destination for the surrounding new and existing neighborhoods and supporting bicycle commuters. Mayor Castor and her amazing team are truly transforming Tampa's tomorrow. According to Beth Osborne, the former US DOT Tiger Grant manager, and now the Director for Transportation for America, trip counting on a national level only pertains to the number of trip commuter trips, in other words, coming and going to work, as collected on the census. But many cities, have done more robust analytics, and I suspect Tampa would fit into this mold as well. Karina Ricks, the victory of Pittsburgh, <laughs> said last week that 40% of the trips made in Pittsburgh were under two miles, and a whopping 51% under three miles. Just yesterday, Jane Duncan, Danny Jorgensen, and I Brandy Milky, we uh, joined 60 other women and we biked to this park and it was less than a two mile bike. So it's totally doable. And especially with these great facilities. On the occasions we've met in Washington, D.C., Congresswoman Castor, you've always conveyed sincere desire to improve the conditions for active transportation, public health, and sustainable mobility. I hope we get to take some of those urban bike trail rides that we've talked about on a couple of occasions. We can really explore and experience the economic development that is happening. This is trail-oriented development, the other T-O-D. <laughs> so it's real. According to the Urban Land Institute, real estate along trails has higher prices uh, when they go on, on the market, spend fewer days on market and experience higher rates of appreciation, and that equals more tax revenue. All good. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be much of an advocate if I didn't ask you for some more things. <laughs> I just have three. <laughs> Number one, be ready for a capacity issue from the very first day. We experienced this on Riverwalk version 1.0. The minute the Curtis Sixth and Park connection was made, complaints started flowing into the mayor's office. This is a capacity issue. If you look, if you check with the Florida Department of Environmental Protection Office of Greenways and Trails, they will tell you that especially during the pandemic, we have had two and three hundred percent growth of all trail usage in the state, and we are no exception here. So be ready for a capacity issue. I suggest to you that we don't have a user behavior problem. We just need more space. People who are using, people who aspire to have uh, a commute to work and just need to move quickly, 
or those who want to get a cardio workout in need alternative space. We need to get them off of these trails so that mothers with trailers and the others that we saw yesterday uh, can have leisurely bike rides, stop for coffee, for a cold beer. Number two, be mindful of the transportation ease being equally valued. To advocates, engineering gives us the biggest bang for our buck. Education is a little bit troubling sometimes when it's considered equal to engineering and equal metric. It can sound like, dear system user, please don't use the system in the manner in which it was designed. So I ask you to be mindful of that. If we have to put up a lot of signs on how to use a space, it could be an indication that we have the capacity issue I mentioned or that our design has failed. Number three and the last one, look for any and all opportunities to connect through slow streets, neighborhood greenways, and other protected facilities. Remember the motto of People for Bikes, a national advocacy organization, the second to uh, uh, the League of American Bicyclists. We won't have peace on our roads until everyone has a piece of the roads, or in this case, a separate piece of the road. Thank you again for the opportunity to celebrate in this momentous, momentous occasion. I'm deeply moved by the, the thanks you've shared with me, and I hope you don't mind that I ask for a little bit more. <laughs>
housing, to bring more jobs to uh, the community that's in West Tampa. So again, I'm on behalf of the West Tampa CRA and CAC, uh, Wealthy Railroad, and we will be here to help with any way we can. So again, thank you so much. Thank you. perspective and from new development. Um, from the historic perspective, my family has had uh, their cabinet shop in West Tampa for over 40 years now, so it's been a part of my life uh, for that long, and so I'm very excited to see, see it come back to life in a very, very thoughtful way. So last but not least is our king of mobility, uh, Vic Beatty. He is the one that's making it all happen, although not as fast as his mail would like, but that is transportation. But uh, Vic is just doing amazing things. Uh, he and his team, amazing things in our community. And Gene Duncan left uh, uh, very big shoes to fill uh, when, when she stepped up and Vic stepped into that position. So Vic, a few words from you. So this project, this grant, the way we're going to put the six, uh, uh, our six million dollars and the uh, federal government's uh, twenty-four million dollars to use, is not just to address transportation problems, but also sustainability and resilience with green infrastructure, with taking single occupant vehicle trips off the road. We're addressing equity. There are three critical opportunity zones around the project area where as downtown has developed, as our urban core has developed, projects like these now extend that opportunity north of the interstate, west of the river, east of downtown, and make jobs more accessible, make transportation options more economical. Not everyone can afford a car, not everyone can afford insurance and gas. 11% of our city's population does not have a vehicle. These are households. And so this project really takes the boom that you see in our urban areas and takes it out to these neighborhoods. The other thing this project does is provides actual connectivity across neighborhoods, not just roadways, but bikeways and walkways. And these are neighborhoods that have not historically been connected. And today you have a single theme of connectivity across active transportation from Gandhi and Bayshore all the way into Ybor City and all the neighborhoods in between. So this project does a lot. It really brings the city together, it brings our strategy to life. And I am very, very grateful to our team and our leadership with Gene and the mayor and the Parks Department, Economic Opportunity, and our folks at Mobility, you all rock. And I'm very grateful, thank you. took a part in this, you know, from the city team to uh, the community, the residents, activists, and everyone else that whose voice was a part of, of this Riverwalk extension. It couldn't be more exciting. I have to thank, once again, former Mayor Bob Buckhorn for his vision to apply for this grant and, and to bring it to fruition. And then lastly, thank Congresswoman Kathy Castor for seeing it through and ensuring that Tampa was a, one of only two bill grant sites that were awarded in the entire state of Florida. 
The other one happened to be in her area as well, but we don't want to brag too much. <laughs> extension along the west bank of the Hillsboro River is going to be a huge step forward in transforming Tampa's tomorrow and I can't wait, I can't wait to be there. All right, thank you all. If anybody has any questions, we'll answer those now. All right, guys, like that. Thank you guys once again, much appreciated.